Hi! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ron and I'm a certified public accountant. So previously in episode 6, I mentioned that we're going to have a mini-series focused on adjusting entries or those entries that we prepare at the end of each accounting period to make the books in alignment with the accrual basis of accounting. Ngayong alam mo na ang reason or the big picture kung bakit tayo gumagawa ng adjusting entries at the end of each accounting period, we will now discuss the specifics of each common adjusting entries. But before we begin, please don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video or you learn from it. Share this video to your timeline or your friends and hit the subscribe button and bell notification icon para lagi kang updated pag may bago akong uploads. Now, in this first out of many chapters of episode 7, I'm going to discuss the accounting for bad debts which is also called doubtful accounts. So without further ado, welcome to the first chapter of Accounting Heist episode 7. First things first, ano ba ang tinatawag na bad debts? In business, dude pare chong, we are not always engaging in cash transactions. In order to boost revenue or sales, we also extend credit to our customers or in Tagalog, nagpapautang tayo. In such a case, the proforma entry is a debit to accounts receivable and the credit to a sales or other revenue account. Now, Dahil nagpapautang tayo, we run the risk or the possibility na hindi tayo mabayaran ng ating customers at ito ang tinatawag natin na bad debts. So paano ba ang accounting for bad debts? Now, there are actually two ways to account for bad debts, the direct write-off method and the allowance method. However, the direct write-off method does not follow the accrual basis and thus, it is prohibited by the standards. Kaya naman, i-discuss lang natin ito for comparison purpose and appreciation mo lang. Pero remember, gaya ng sabi ko, it does not follow the accrual basis which is required by PAS1. Let's discuss! Under the direct write-off method, we record bad debts when the business has already determined that such an account is already uncollectible. Meaning, na-determine na natin o alam na natin na hindi natin makokolekta ang portion ng receivable. For example, on December 15, 2019, Brainwash Laundromat performed laundry services worth 100,000 on account for the CPA recipe, payable in 60 days. However, on January 10, 2020, the CPA recipe filed for bankruptcy. The initial entry to record the sale goes like this. We will record on December 15, so the transaction will be dated December 15, and we will debit accounts receivable for 100,000 and we credit service revenue for 100,000. Now, to record the bad debt under the direct write of method, we will simply write off directly the accounts receivable from the CPA recipe with the following entry. The entry will be on January 10, 2020 and will include a debit to bad debts expense for 100,000 and a credit to accounts receivable for 100,000 as well. Pansinin mo, dude, pare chong ha, hindi natin ni-reverse ang sales. Bakit? Because ang bad debt ay expense, meaning it is a cost of doing business on credit, no? It is a cost of doing business ng iyong pagpapautang. It should be presented on the expenses section of the income statement. Now, the second way to account for bad debts expense is by making an estimate of the bad debts. Pansinin mo dud pare chong yung word na estimate. Ibig sabihin nito, tinatansya lang natin kung magkano ang ini-expect natin na hindi mababayaran sa mga pautang natin. Kung sa direct right of method ay nag recognize ka ng bad debts expense kapag sure kang hindi ka na mababayaran, under the allowance method, dud pare chong, ay nag recognize tayo ng bad debts expense even if hindi tayo 100% sure na hindi tayo mababayaran. Bakit natin ito ginagawa? Malamang nasa isip mo ngayon na mas logical ang direct right of method. Pero let me show you the problem with the direct right of method and kung bakit allowance method lang ang pwede nating gamitin. In our previous example, let's assume a monthly period. Kung maaalala mo, the revenue in this example was recorded on December 2019. 
Thus, such revenue will appear on the income statement for December 2019. However, the bad debts expense will be reported on January 2020. Kung napanood mo ang Accounting Heist Episode 6, malamang gets mo na na this violates the matching principle. Kung hindi mo pa naman napapanood, nasa baba ang link to Episode 6. Sabi nga natin, the expenses should be matched to the revenue to which such expense relates. In this case, since the bad debt is related to the revenue to the CPA recipe, dapat i-present sila pareho in the same period gaya ng sinasabi sa matching principle. Ito ang reason kung bakit we try to estimate the bad debts or the doubtful accounts. We try to recognize bad debts expense in the same period as the related sales even if wala pa naman talagang 100% solid evidence na hindi na magbabayad ang customer. Ito ang reason kung bakit ang account na gagamitin natin ay tinatawag na allowance for doubtful accounts or allowance for bad debts dahil nga, this is just an estimate or an allowance. Ang allowance for bad debts ay contra asset account to the accounts receivable. Ibig sabihin, binabawasan niya ang presented balance ng accounts receivable. At dahil binabawasan niya ang isang asset account which have a debit normal balance, ibig sabihin ang normal balance ng allowance for bad debts ay credit. So to increase this account, you should credit and to decrease, you should debit. So question, paano natin malalaman ang estimate ng bad debts? Try mo bumili sa Divisoria Dud Parichong may mga bolang kristal. Kidding aside, there are three ways to estimate bad debts expense. Namely, aging of accounts receivable, percentage of accounts receivable, and percentage of sales. Now, pag-usapan muna natin ang aging of accounts receivable. Ano ba ang aging of accounts receivable? Sa actual accounting world, meron tayong tinatawag na aging schedule dud parichong. Sa aging schedule, we classify customer accounts based on how old they are. Kaya nga aging dud parichong. Sinusukat natin kung gaano na bakatagal na unpaid ang customer account. Pwede mo rin silang i-classify as not yet due or past due based sa credit terms na ino-offer mo. I have here a simple example. As you can see, we categorize the customer accounts based on how old they are. Merong not yet due, merong 1 to 30 days ng past due, and so on. Now, to estimate the allowance for doubtful accounts using this method, companies can use their historical data, meaning based on their past experiences. If for instance, ilang percent ba per category ang na-experience na nilang bad debts before? Ibig sabihin, may historical basis ang percentages na ina-apply, hindi basta hula-hula lang. Now, in terms of being systematic, ito ang pinaka-methodical or scientific na approach to compute for bad debts. However, dahil logically, mas maraming bad debts from the older accounts, ibig sabihin, mas malaki ang nare-record na bad debts expense sa recent period which are in fact caused by sales from older periods. For instance, if an account is caused by sales from one year ago, Mas mataas ang likelihood or probability na hindi siya makulek so ibig sabihin, mataas ang magiging rate niya for the current period. Ibig sabihin, in a way, hindi gaanong namamatch ang expenses in the period of the related revenue. Now, let's assume na the company in our example has available data and the compute na ang percentages. For example, pwedeng na-determine nila no na for those accounts na not yet due, Based on past experiences, 1% hindi na collect. For 1 to 30 days past due, 5% and so on. Now, all you have to do is multiply that and makukuha mo na ang required allowance for bad debts. Ibig sabihin, yan dapat ang account ending balance na mag appear sa financial statements. So what if meron ng initial balance ang iyong allowance for bad debts? For example, hindi naman ito ang iyong first year of operation so ibig sabihin meron ka ng balance sa allowance for bad debts. Na for illustration purpose, let's assume na it's 100,000 pesos. According to our aging of accounts receivable, dapat at year end the balance should be 168,000 pesos. So anong gagawin mo? Since we need to increase the allowance for bad debts account which as mentioned earlier has a normal credit balance, we should credit it by 68,000 pesos. Now, the entry to record this is debit bad debts expense 68,000 and credit allowance for bad debts 68,000. 
Now, the second method to estimate bad debts is simpler. It is simply applying a fixed rate to the account's receivable balance. Ang rate na ito ay pwede rin manggaling sa historical data or past experiences of the entity. However, the problem with this method is similar to the aging procedure in that it does not consider the timing of the sales which makes up the account's receivable balance and thus the related bad debts expense. Now, to illustrate, let's assume the previous example. So, if we sum etong accounts per category, we will get 3,100,000 pesos. So, let's say that the entity determined a 5% fixed rate, then the allowance for bad debts account should be 155,000 pesos. Now, since 155,000 dapat ang balance at the end of the period, at meron ka ng 100,000, kailangan mo lang dagdagan ng 55,000 ang balance. Therefore, the entry to record this is, Debit bad debts expense, credit allowance for bad debts for 55,000 pesos. Now, the third and last method to estimate bad debts is by using a percentage on the sales, which is also a simple approach. However, this one favors the matching principle the most. Bakit? Because the expense you will recognize is directly based on the sales of the current period. So, kung 2020 ang sale, 2020 rin ang bad debts expense. Although, syempre, this is still an estimate. Now, the rate to be used can be based on past experiences and is usually computed by dividing the past bad debts expenses of the previous years against the credit sales. So, for example, the following data are available. The credit sales and bad debts expense of Big Bang Bookstore for the previous 5 years are as follows. Now, as you can see, the rate for the previous 5 years are given. We can use the average of the previous 5 years to compute the bad debts expense for the current year. Now, kung paano compute ang rate na gagamitin, it varies from case to case depending sa accounting policy ng isang business entity. Pwedeng gusto niya past 10 years or past 8 years, etc. Pwede rin na ang basis na sales na gagamitin is purely credit sales or pwedeng included na rin ang cash sales. So it actually depends. But logically, of course, you would use credit sales dahil accounts receivable ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. Now, dahil meron na tayong rate na 2.78%, we simply multiply this to the sales figure to get the bad debts expense for 2020, which is 69,551.44 pesos. Sir, may butal, tama ba yan? Oo naman, dude, barichong. Hindi naman required na laging walang butal ang tamang sagot. Now, to do the entry, debit bad debts expense 69,551.44, credit allowance for bad debts 69,551.44. Just to highlight, since the rate we used is based on the bad debts in relation to the sales figure, the amount we computed is already the bad debts expense, regardless if my outstanding balance na ang allowance for bad debts. This is because we estimated the bad debts expense to be 2.78% of the current year sales and not the allowance as opposed to the previous two estimation methods. Ngayong alam mo na dod pare chong ang methods to estimate the bad debts expense, comment down below kung ano sa tingin mo ang the best method to estimate bad debts or doubtful accounts at bakit sa tingin mo iyon ang the best method. And that's it, Dud Parichong. I hope marami kang natutunan sa chapter na ito. If you enjoyed and learned from this video, please don't forget to hit the like button, share this video to your friends, and hit the subscribe button and bell notification icon para lagi kang updated pag may bago akong video. Also, if you have feedbacks, questions, or suggestions, feel free to comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Again, my name is Ron, Certified Public Accountant. And see you next episode.